close your eyes and imagine. Peace, tranquility, solitude. Most of us like to be on our own from time to time. It's healthy. It gives us time to recharge our batteries, to dream our daydreams without interruption. But too much solitude can lead to loneliness. Loneliness to isolation. And in isolation, daydreams can sometimes turn into nightmares, as we shall see. I'm fed up with this. Why does nobody ever choose us? Because they don't know nothing about us. We were the last to come to the orphanage, and all the other kids have made the marks before us. But this is the second year we've been left out. Why just us? Hush a minute, will you? What's up? Just listen, can't you? Over there! Oh, the poor thing! He's had his leg! Look! He's got a collar. It's a tag. Vespa. And an address? Miss A. Dwell. Maisie Dunlop says she's a witch. Maisie Dunlop's too stupid to be a witch. No, Miss Dwell. Look, I don't care if she's a witch or not, as long as she'll give us a reward. Three children looking for a reward, hoping secretly for more money than they'd ever seen in their short lives. The freeing of Vespa seemed no more than an interesting event, but interesting can be just another word for dangerous. What's that ancient Chinese proverb? May you live in interesting times. Mr. Temporal? Mr. Groby Temporal? And you? Hallett. There's Hallett from the town council. Well, don't you want to know why I'm here? No doubt. You'll get around to telling me. <laughs> uh, the council would like to uh, take a lease on a uh, hundred yards of your property, uh, and we'd, um... The answer's no. On your way, Councillor. Ten wooden chalets is all we want to erect. Ten chalets for vacation use only, and well away from your dwelling. And spoil the quiet and calm of this bay? No. Quiet is how it is, and quiet is how it will stay. No, you listen here. I've been in touch with the Central Land Registry, and I can prove your claim on this beach is false. If you don't lease the land to the council... My claim isn't false, Councillor, I know, because I was here, right here, when that lease was granted to my father in perpetuity by Major Edgar Dwelf himself. You've been living alone too long, Mr. Temporal. That lease was granted 110 years ago. You're stark staring crazy. There's a storm brewing. You don't want to be caught in it.
So, what has this evil man, this master of the black arts, got to do with our three young orphans? Nothing, you'd hope. He's not a man anyone would want to tangle with, but sometimes you get involved, like it or not. For the moment, after a long walk, all the children were hoping for was a lemonade, perhaps, and a reward. Well, this is it. <laughs> Marie, don't want a Masarino reward. Do we? Looks to be empty. Maybe she's dead and Vespa went off to get help. This is definitely weird. Murray! What are you doing? Come on, maybe she's ill. We have to find out. Murray. Me neither. Let's go, Murray. Look, if the place is empty, there's nothing to be scared of. But if Miss Twelf is around here somewhere and ill, we'll have to find her, okay? Ruth, you go outside and out the back. Dot, you go upstairs. Miss Twelf, I'm a friend. Where are you? is going on? Miss Dwell. Yes? We found this bird, so we, we thought you'd be missing him, so we brought him home. But the house was empty. And there was a giant yelling at me from the bedroom window. What's your name? Dot Brian, Miss, from the orphanage. We won't get into no trouble, will we? Dot, you say there was a giant at the window? What did he look like? He had long gray hair and a black hat and <laughs> specs. And so big. It sounds very much as though Groby Temporal's up to his tricks again. Groby Temporal? Who's he? Someone you're better off not knowing. Now then, house, pull yourself together and behave. Is this any way to treat visitors of mine? Sorry, Miss Dwell. <laughs> Oh, ship-shape now, Miss Dwell. I haven't even begun to thank you for bringing Vesper home. Really, house, ship-shape indeed. Now behave and put things back properly. I do apologize, Miss Dwell. Thank you, house. Now, refreshments. seen him since. His, his car's there. So where is he? What car? It's getting dark. Time you left. Or you could go the way Les Howlett went. You'll be hearing from me. Can't wait.
Mr. Wells? Sure was. Best meal we've had for... Best meal we've ever had. Oh, oh, well, now, it's time to be getting you back to the orphanage. Uh, Mr. Omarad will be extremely cross with me for delaying you. What's the matter? <clears throat> Don't you want to go back? Not really. It's just that... We're the only ones left at the orphanage at the moment. All the other kids are off on vacation. Vacation? Where? With different families in town. It was the same last year. I see. Well, I'm not used to having guests in my home. But I think the least I can do is to put you up for the night. So, spending the night in the house of a witch and being menaced by another with magical powers. This might be a lot better than a holiday with a local family, but it's also a whole lot more scary. First time in a proper home. Ten years. You don't think it's a bit creepy? You mean because she's a witch? Mm. She's a bit frightening, but I like her. I wonder if the house will talk to us. Murray! What? Don't meddle. Oh, come on, Ruth. That might be fun. Go on, Murray. House? House? Can you hear me? Try again. House? House? Did someone call? <laughs> yes, it was us. Oh, you know what time it is. Sorry for waking you, House. Well, now I'm awake. What do you desire? So, what can you do? Do? How about this? Or this? Look! <laughs> or this? Wow! You could change your room every day. You could change your whole house. Ah! Ah! <laughs> That's what I saw this morning! <laughs> Don't meddle with me and mine, groby temporal, or you'll find yourself in very hot water indeed. Calm down. There's no need to be alarmed. Now, the thing is this. Groby has left me well alone, always. Yet, the moment you appeared, he tried to frighten you away. Now, why? Why you? Three children he's never met before. What power have you got that he fears? Maybe it's because you're orphans, or children. Or maybe it's because you're so close, in harmony with one another. Well, whatever it is, he clearly fears your bond with me. Wow, I've never had power before. And I think that you all better stay here with me until this business is concluded satisfactorily. Mm. Oh. Goodness, what hideous wallpaper. How sorry, Miss Dwelf. That's better. Uh, 
Well, it's Les Hallett's car, and no less. Yeah, that doesn't make it Groby's fault. Now, who do you choose to believe, him or me? Let's talk to the man, shall we? Lovely time for a visit, lads. Champagne? No time for socializing, Groby. I'm here to find out what's happened to Les Howlett. Well, when he left yesterday, he was going to the mainland. Uh, that's lies. So it's all lies. Les, Les Howlett's never been to the mainland. He Groby! Hasn't... Les Howlett wouldn't go to the mainland without his car. Car? What are you doing with him? Yes, I'm gonna hold it, Sven. I'll have to arrest you for offensive behavior. Don't, don't you see he's behind it all? Anything to stop these chalets being built? Sergeant Aerosmith. Some citizen is certainly crazy around here. And it isn't me. Temporal like you. It goes back a long way. My great grandfather and the land deed for the bay. See, to understand Groby Temporal, you have to understand this. By 1840, he and his father were masters of the bay, and then they started to practice serious black magic. Now his father died on the gallows. But Groby mysteriously escaped, and he has reigned over the bay in triumph ever since. Mainly because they're all afraid of him. Is that why he's called Temporal? Because of his temper? <laughs> that may be. But Tempus is Latin for time. And Groby's ancestors have always played with time. Clockmakers, I believe. I still don't see why he's cross with us. Any time now. I should receive a message. <coughs> Angela Dwell speaking. Yes. Ah, oh, yes. Now I understand. Yes, almost immediately. Goodbye. That was the town council. And they want to know about the land deed to the bay, as they're having trouble with Groby Temporal. I don't know if I can help them, but I must try. Well, I'm, I'm telling you, and I, I tell you, I have it on good authority, and the, and the good people of this township can be my witness. Oh, oh, oh this is authentic, Temporal. From the Central Land Registry. I, I bought it myself and personally. Lower your voice and tell me what it says. It, it says black on white. The, the, this beach was granted in perpetuity to the citizens of this township by the then governor of this island. But this document attests that my father, Edward Temporal, was given this land by the citizens of this township as a reward for ridding the place of the plague. A document signed and sealed by that same government. You haven't done all of your homework, Mr. Olufsen. Temporal. Let me see that parchment. This is a pathetic forgery. This is not the signature of my great-grandfather, Major Edgar Dwell. It's in your own hand. I knew it. You had it, Groby. <laughs> Where's your proof now? Here. Groby Temporal? 
You have exactly one week to pack your bags and get off this beach. Well, if that's the case, you and your fellow counselors should inspect your new domain before nightfall. the darkness. Still the storm and call those men back. What darkness? What men? Very well. Then let there be war between us. Let it come down, Miss Twelve. Let it come down. Children, I need your help. What do we have to do? Watch Groby Shack. See when he's safely out of the way. Then go inside and photograph everything. I need to know what secret weapon he may have up his sleeve, from which he derives his source of power. There he goes. Once he's well out of sight, we can slip into that shack of his. Sorry, Miss Twelve. Well, I'm sure it wasn't your fault, Murray. Well, you risked everything to take these. It just proves Groby is far more powerful than I imagined. So what are we going to do about Dot?
Persuade the council to accept my full rights and you'll have the child back. If not, you'll never see her again. Your obedient servant, Groby Temporal. So, we will have to pool our skills for a rescue operation. <laughs> <laughs> Young Miss Twelve is nothing. Nothing. She couldn't save you, could she? So, forget her. Throw in your hand with old Groby. He'll make you anything you want to be. What do you mean, mister? Would you like to be a radiant princess? Top of the tree with the world at your feet? Go, look, look in the mirror. You can be a princess if you join with me. If not, you'll be a Cinderella for the rest of your days. Living in a cellar, no proper food, no proper light, no human company. Which is it to be, my kitten? Well, what would you do? Join forces with Groby and live the rest of your days in luxury or stand against him and risk a lifetime of poverty and misery? The trouble with evil is that it often comes dressed in the finest clothes and smiling like a long lost friend. Keep her here. Ah! I'll have you, lad. Think you're fast on your feet, maybe? No one escapes from Groby Temporal. much time. thy wicked claw. God, thou not thy master's door. Quickly, the spell won't stop it for long. Yes, we did it! But why is it getting so dark? And where's Murray? He'll be around, but we've got to get away. Come on.
Well, unless you uphold my claim to the beach, I will send the boy into darkness visible. Do you hear me? Darkness visible, from whence you will never return. Time I caught Ted Arrowsmith, I think. What? The police? What can he do against black magic? Now, why can't you save Murray? For the first time in my life, I don't know what to do. I'm frightened. You? Frightened? I sense Groby has a secret force somewhere inside his shack. Not that. I will never be able to defeat him. A secret force? I wonder what that could be. Something unseen, perhaps. They needed a clue, and the clue must lie in the strange, ramshackle place that Groby had made his home. Without the secret, would they ever see Murray again? Only time would tell. Doc, you were in there all night. What can you remember? I can't remember nothing. I was too frightened. Don't worry, Doc. Don't worry. Relax. Something might come to you. All I remember is the cat and its big staring eyes. That and the clock sticking loud enough to drive you mad. Well, perhaps it's something else. Something not in his shack. You said he was afraid of us. Well, it seemed so when he tried to drive you from here. But why? We're only young. And he's so old. Perhaps he's afraid of your youth, your innocence. After all, you have time on your side. Not if we're gonna save Murray. Where's the boy, Tinferal? Boy, officer? Murray! 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 So you chose to throw your hand in with the weaklings, Dorothy. I warned you about that. The kid ain't there, so where is he? <coughs> Get <coughs> down there and release him, you reprobate! You can't reach him. At least you've got the message. You keep them off my beach, you can have the boy back. You have no legal claim to this land. Then the boy is lost forever. I'm arresting you for the kidnapping of Murray Douglas. What Murray? I'll be back with an army of men to bring you in. No, you won't. You 
are evil. Just a simple man defending his simple rights, Mr. You will regret this vulgar display, Mr. Temporal. I promise you. You have until noon tomorrow to keep your promise. After that, the boy is lost forever. Anything in the shack, Miss Twelve? So, Groby Temporal held all the aces, and Angela Twelve still hadn't learned the secret, the secret that alone could defeat the power of Groby. And what had really happened to Murray? Tomorrow you must face the music that I shall provide. Never yours, Angela Dwelf. You tell your mistress, and I'll be waiting. And no prisoners taken. Now, off you go. Morning to you, ma'am. And to your charming friend. Enough of your flattery, Temporal. I've come to teach you a lesson. At your service. Let the lesson commence. Though who is the pupil and who is the teacher, we have yet to see. Ladies, if you please. other harm. Let no angel guard your hand. Let no demon roam the strand. What are they doing? What's he doing to her? Freezing her seems like.
You're better than I expected. Of course I am. didn't you? Now then, face the music. destroy your pleasant little township and all of its inhabitants at the snap of a finger. And get down on your knees and acknowledge me as master and I'll spare the lives of these inhabitants. But not yours. You have been a thorn in my side for too long. The hour has come. He's afraid of your youth. After all, you have time on your side. Time. 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 Something to do with these clocks. Why do you deny a few families a little summer happiness on your bay? Why do you want to murder good people? Because I saw my father murdered by just such good people on the orders of your great-grandfather, Major Edgar Dwell. So get on with it. The powers of hell have served me well and lead you to your doom. What power have you got that he fears? Maybe it's because you're so close, in harmony with one another. Why are they all so different? That's it. The time on the clocks. Crowby lives in the time between them. I've got it, Miss Twelve. Ten. Yours again.
And that's the last we shall see of Groby Temporal. You mean that, Miss Dwell? I promise you. But now, it's time to recall our friends from Darkness Visible. Ruth, trumpet, please. my friends. <laughs> so, the nightmare that was Groby Temporal had been defeated by three small children joining forces with their new friend, Angela Dwelf. Have you ever heard the old saying, united we stand, divided we fall? Just like Groby's clocks, if people can learn to chime at the same time, there's no telling what they can do. Mm. Oh, what a lovely party. I haven't enjoyed myself so much for ages. And thanks to your courage, the power of Groby Temporal has been removed forever. <laughs> you didn't do so badly yourself, miss. I should say not. Me neither. So here's to you for being such a sport and so kind. And so plucky. Well, you're very kind. Well, thank you. Oh, dear. <laughs> Spot a hay fever, I think. It's been the most <laughs> wonderful two weeks we've ever had, even with that groby. And now it's back to the orphanage. Come on, Dot. It's been great fun, and we'll remember it for the rest of our lives. You've been a real friend to us, Miss Dwelf. So we'd like to... Could we come and stay with you next holidays? What? <laughs> you mean stay here? I thought you might like to come and stay here with me for always. Always? Oh, yes. I talked to Mr. Omerod at the orphanage about it, and he's very understanding. You see, I've had a useful enough life, but it's been lonelier than I realized until you three came to stay with me. I think we were meant for one another, and I want... I want to adopt you all. Well, would you like that? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Family I've taken on. <laughs> In the silence of a sleepless night, don't be afraid. Step through your darkest hour. Be strong, be brave. Somewhere in time. Close your eyes. 